Hi everyone, welcome to Mat 125, Measures of Dispersion. Today we're going to look at part of your homework from 311, homework 12.4, Measures of Dispersion. One thing I want to recommend for this course moving forward is an excellent online calculator. The calculator is Web 2.0 Calc and it can easily be found by just searching for it online. The reason why I love it so much and students rave about it is because you can actually type in numbers and you can your expression will appear above the calculator so that you know for sure that you are entering everything in correctly. So this is just a recommendation. I highly recommend it for this week's homework and also upcoming financial formulas. It's, it's very, very, very helpful. So today we're going to talk about some symbols and I know we talked about this in our workshop, the first workshop, the workshop before this one, but we're going to take a look again at sample mean and so that's going to be denoted by the X with the horizontal bar over it. So when you see that it's going to be the mean or average or sometimes referred to as the sample mean. And we also talked about this symbol here, a Greek letter, sigma, which just means to sum up. So when you see this formula, the formula to figure out what the average is or the sample mean, we're going to take all of the data that we have and add it up and divide by the number of values that we have in our data. And so x is going to be our data and n, n is going to be our sample size. Just really important to just know that the different parts of the formula. So we're going to look at this example. Use the five numbers 26, 28, 25, 27, and 24 for your data. Step one we are going to figure out what the average is for all of those numbers. So again, just a review from last time, if you have a chance to listen to the recording for the module two, I would highly recommend it. So this symbol here again, so X with that horizontal bar over it, that is the mean. And we're just gonna take the sum of all of the values in this data. So 26 plus 28 plus 25 plus 27 plus 24. And so it looks like, let's go back here. So I'm going to actually draw this out here. So you can use the calculator of your choice. So let's see, we've got 26 plus 28 plus 25, plus 27, plus 24. So we have 130 as our final number for our sum. Okay, so this second step, there's our, there's our 130, we got the sum. We're gonna take that number and divide it by how many numbers we had in our data. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So when we divide 130 divided by five, remember you have to enter this 130 first in your calculator, use the division symbol, and then enter five. So the mean of all of this data is going to be 26. So let's remember that. So I'm gonna put down here in the chat the average or our mean, the sample mean, our average, 
is going to be equal to 26. Let's keep this, let's keep track of this. So then in this section, you're going to be faced with this formula here. So sample standard deviation. So standard deviation is a way to describe how spread out the numbers are, the numbers that you're given in the data. And so I, sometimes I get a lot of calls for this, this formula in particular. So but today we're going to break down every single part to this. So some things that we notice, we see the Greek letter sigma. So we have summation. We recognize x is going to be our data. And look at this here. We've got, I'm going to use my pointer here. We have got the average right here. And so I'm going to show you how to use your data to figure out what this formula is. And yes, there are programs out there that can help you calculate this. But in this particular workshop, we're going to work on trying to calculate these by hand. <clears throat> So with this data, remember our, our average is going to be 26. So the first thing I want to look at, I'm going to first <coughs> excuse me, write down here. That the average is going to be 26. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to look at this piece here. So we've got the sum of, right? And I don't want to worry about that too much. What I want to worry about first is this x minus the average. So we're going to look at that, and that's all we're going to do for this step. So what you actually want to do is look at each value in your data set and subtract that number from the average or the mean. So <clears throat> the first one is going to be um, 26. 26 is your x minus ooh, 26, right on, right, so close. Okay. So the second part of this is that I'm going to take that value and square it. So it's going to be 0. And then let's work on that first. And then we'll worry about we're going to um, this summation is going to let us know that we're going to add all those numbers. So I think maybe it would be easier to keep all of these together. So let's do this. So the next one, we're going to use the same formula here. We're just going to take our next value in our data set. We've got 28. And we're going to subtract our average, which is 26. And we're going to square that value. So our next one, and pause this video too if you want to try this on your own and see if you can figure out the answer. So 28 minus 26 is going to be 2. 2 all squared is going to be 4. So now we have 0 plus 4. We're going to do this for all of the values in this data set. So we're going to continue this. We're going to add 25 minus 26. which is negative 1. So negative 1 all squared is just going to be the number 1. I encourage you to pause the video here and see if you can come up with the rest of those numbers. So hopefully you had a chance to work on those. And I'm going to look at, so we're going to continue this 27 
minus 26. I'm going to continue here. I ran out of room a little bit, but I'm going to go right down here. 27 minus 26 is just 1, all squared. <coughs> plus 24 minus 26 is going to be negative 2, all squared, negative 2, all squared. It's going to be 4, so let's see, let's add all these together, and we end up with a grand total of 0 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. So that's going to be 10. Now that 10 is only representative of this part right here, which is going to be beautiful because we can then, let's remember that this part right here, we did all of the work for, and we got the number 10. Let's take a quick peek ahead. Now remember, so we're going step by step. So, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit so we can replace this with the number 10. We're getting really close to that end. Now, I just want you to focus on, ah, that's nice, right? We've got 10 divided by n minus 1. And remember, this n is the number of values that were in our data. So let's go back one side. Let's count how many. We have 1, 2, 3, Four, five. The value of n is going to be 5. So our next step here, we're going to replace that n with the number 5, 5 minus 1. And we get 10 divided by 4. And it's okay if it's a fraction or a decimal, you can enter that right into your calculator see what we get. We get 10 divided by 4, which is 2.5. All right. So now we have calculated everything under this radical sign right here. So now we have the square root of 2 0.5. So step by step, we calculated this 10 here. Then we, the n minus 1 is our 4. And we figured out what that number is. So let's clean this up just a little bit. So our final last step, again, just step by step, the standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root of 2.5. And that's something you can enter right into your calculator as well. So let's do that. And let's round to the nearest tenth. So I get about 1.58 rounded to the nearest hundredth, but let's round to the nearest <clears throat> tenth. So if we're looking to round, we look at this number and then we look to the right. <clears throat> If this number is greater than or equal to 5, then we round the number in the tenths place up. So we get a final answer of 1.6. So all of those steps just for this one formula. So I suggest that you try these numbers again on a piece of paper. Write down all the numbers, write down this formula, and see if you can go through the steps. And go back in this recording and see if you can, you can follow along. But I definitely, this, this formula can be a little overwhelming at first, but remember if you go step by step and do one at a time, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be as overwhelming. So some of the things that we've talked about before, we have some resources for MAT 125. Right in your course in Brightspace, you can look for academic support. And within academic support, you can schedule a workshop or a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Most of the workshops now are drop-ins. You can visit your learning community where you can also access one-on-one -on -one appointments and also drop-ins. 
and a workshop calendar. And we also offer online tutoring, subject specific drop in tutoring, math and computer science drop in tutoring. So I'm going to take a quick minute just to <clears throat> get you right in your course in Brightspace just to show you all of this. So to the left, you see academic support. So here you can schedule a workshop or a one on one appointment. And actually, you don't even have to schedule a workshop anymore. And this will update. This is a static recording, so I'm sure things will update along the way. But for now, if you click on math coaching or peer tutoring, just make sure that you know that peer tutoring is here. <clears throat> and you can click on the subject area. So for this case, you would choose math. And any of the peer tutors, this, this will change as well, but any of the peer tutors will come up. So just so you know that there are other options other than math coaching that you also can select peer tutoring. It's very important to note that. Also here, visit your learning community. You'd want to go right to the online math center where you can see at the top left here, we've got workshop calendar. It'll take you right to the workshop calendar. We can navigate down so you can look for your course and this is where you would join the workshop. You don't even need to register with your SNH email and the full schedule and description of the workshops are listed, which is very helpful. And some of these will have a button, Recorded Lessons. This is probably where you found this one. And let's see. You can find all of those for any of these courses for math. Excellent. So if we go back, a couple of other things I want to show you actually Within the learning community, we also have additional resources, additional videos that you can find within your course, general math resources, recorded academic support videos. And right within the Online Math Center, you can post a question, talk to other students, and find some other great resources as well. One more thing, you'll see subject specific drop in tutoring as well as math and computer science drop in tutoring. I'm just going to take you through one. <clears throat> so at the bottom here, click here to continue. Work with a tutor or career coach. Choose math, and you'll be taken to, I'm going to choose algebra. Oh, I already have a request. So the next step in this here is that you are going to log in, and you, um, you can type in your question, and you will be put into a queue, and most likely someone will get back to you as soon as they can. So just other options for you. This can also be accessed through this math and computer science drop in tutoring. So lots of lots of options. <clears throat> So the last part here, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Our email is stemcoach at snhu.edu or peertutoring at snhu.edu. Our phone number is listed there. And as always, we welcome any of your feedback that you have. I'm going to drop this link in for you into the chat. And if you would be so kind and let us know if you have any feedback for these, 
we would really appreciate. We take your we take your feedback very seriously. So thank you so much for taking out the time out of your busy schedule, and I hope everyone has a great night.